Did you know the crocodiles we see today could have been dinosaurs in prehistoric times, if not for one twist of nature? Believe it or not, these two predators come from the same family tree, and it all dates back to what Earth was like before the dinosaurs ruled. From archosaurs to huge flying insects, Earth was actually possessed by animals more monstrous than dinosaurs. So, to find out exactly what the Earth looked like before the dinosaurs, stay with us till the end. To get a grasp of what existed before dinosaurs, it is crucial we take a stroll through the history of our planet. We can break down Earth's history into different periods, each with its own unique forms of life. These periods have fancy names, but don't worry, we'll keep it simple. First up is the Hadean Eon. During this time, scientists believed that our young Earth had a run-in with another protoplanet called Theia. The collision caused a chaotic mess of dust and rocks, forming rings around Earth, much like Saturn's famous rings. Moving on, we arrive at the Paleoarchean era. Picture this, the moon was hanging out really close to Earth, causing massive tides that reached a staggering 1,000 feet in height. Hurricane force winds swept across the globe, and this wild environment set the stage for the early processes of evolution. Then comes the Neoarchean era. During this period, Earth continued to undergo geological changes. The first known supervolcano emerged in what is now Ontario and Quebec. Meanwhile, vibrant reefs formed in the oceans, and the levels of oxygen in the atmosphere increased significantly. Now, ahead to the Paleoproterozoic era. This era is divided into four periods, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll breeze past them. Just know that during the early years of this era, a momentous event called the Great Oxygenation Event took place leading to a predominantly oxygen-filled atmosphere on Earth. Fast forward to the Devonian period. This is when insects started to make their mark on the world. In freshwater systems, you could spot a jawless fish called Cephalapsis, sporting some bony armor. Crabs and ferns also became more common, and we witnessed the evolution of large sharks, hagfish, and ratfish. In the Carboniferous period, the climate was pretty tropical with minor seasonal variations. Imagine enormous dragonflies called Meganura with wingspans reaching 25 to 27 inches, gracefully cruising through the skies. Meanwhile, on land, amphibians began to diversify, and reptiles adopted a more lizard-like body plan, allowing them to conquer the land. This is also when reptiles started laying amniotic eggs on land, a significant milestone. But the real deal, which we know the most about, is the Permian period. During the Permian period, about 300 million years ago, our planet had a supercontinent called Pangaea, which brought all the land masses together like a jigsaw puzzle. And surrounding this massive land mass was a world ocean known as Panthalassa. Picture it like a vast interconnected playground for all sorts of fascinating life forms. The Permian period began after an ice age when temperatures on Earth were much cooler compared to today. But as the early Permian days rolled in, things started heating up literally. The planet warmed up, transforming into a lush and vibrant environment. It was like nature hit the fast-forward button on evolution with plants, insects, and animals diversifying at an incredible pace. This period was a time of rapid change and incredible ecological variety. The landscapes were teeming with life, from towering forests to sprawling wetlands. In this primeval world, you'd find a breathtaking array of plants, insects buzzing about, and animals that would blow your mind. So yeah, before the dinosaurs took the spotlight, the Permian period set the stage for a mesmerizing display of life on Earth. We are talking about some mammal-shaped reptiles, huge amphibians, giant insects, and a much, much warmer climate than today. Next, we are wandering into the world of evolved reptiles to meet the Pelicosaurs or as the Greeks would say, the bull lizards. These remarkable creatures emerged towards the end of the Carboniferous period and stuck around for a good 40 million years, reigning supreme over the continents. They were a big deal, to say the least. Now, if you've ever come across a picture or model of Dimetrodon, you might have thought it was a dinosaur. Well, surprise! It's actually a famous pelicosaur. Dimetrodon was a hefty reptile sporting a distinctive sail on its back. Believe it or not, that sail wasn't just for show. Its main purpose was probably to soak up sunlight, helping Dimetrodon regulate its body temperature. Talk about clever adaptations. Pelicosaurs, like Dimetrodon, came in different flavors. 
While Dimetrodon was a carnivore, there was another pelicosaur, called Edaphosaurus, that looked quite similar but had a leafy diet. In fact, it's entirely possible that these two cousins crossed paths in the prehistoric world, with one potentially munching on the other. Survival of the fittest, right? Now here's the thing. Over the course of those 40 million years, these reptiles evolved into various forms and shapes. They were classified as synapsids, which means they had a special feature, a hole behind each eye in their skulls. Fun fact, all mammals, including us humans, are also synapsids. So we share a little something with these ancient reptiles. During the Permian period, the synapsids coexisted with another group called anapsids. Unlike the synapsids, anapsids lack those skull holes we just talked about. One of the impressive anapsids was Scutosaurus, a large and not so nimble creature. You see, prehistoric reptiles had their own peculiarities and complexes, and Scutosaurus was a prime example of that. Nowadays, the only surviving anapsids are the Testudines, which include our shelled friends, the turtles, tortoises, and terrapins. Towards the end of the Permian period, about 250 million years ago, the world witnessed a catastrophic global event, it's believed that a meteorite impact, similar to the one that wiped out the dinosaurs millions of years later, caused the extinction of over two-thirds of all land-dwelling animals. However, some species of therapsids, aka mammal-like reptiles, managed to survive the chaos, seizing the opportunity to thrive in the newly depopulated landscape of the early Triassic period. One noteworthy survivor was Lystrosaurus a therapsid weighing around 200 pounds. It's been nicknamed the Noah of the Permian-Triassic boundary because fossils of this creature have been found all over the world. Talk about leaving your mark. Now, here's where things get really interesting. During the Permian period, a group of therapsids called cynodonts, also known as dog-toothed reptiles, started developing some distinctively mammalian traits. Evidence suggested that reptiles like Cynognathus and Thrinaxodon had fur, they might have even had warm-blooded metabolisms and sported black, wet, dog-like noses. That's quite a leap closer to mammals, wouldn't you say? Unfortunately, the reign of the therapsids eventually came to an end. By the end of the Triassic period, they were outcompeted by a group called archosaurs, which would later give rise to dinosaurs. But fear not, not all therapsids went extinct. Some small genera managed to survive for millions of years quietly scurrying around under the feet of those mighty dinosaurs. And guess what? Those survivors would eventually evolve into the first prehistoric mammals. Now these guys were a contemporary of the therapsids and other land-dwelling reptiles that managed to survive the Permian-Triassic extinction. Unlike therapsids, archosaurs were diapsids, which means they had two holes in their skull behind each eye socket. What's interesting is that these archosaurs somehow outperformed the therapsids, although the exact reasons are still a bit hazy. One advantage they had was firmly set teeth in their jaws, giving them an evolutionary edge. It's also possible that they were quicker to evolve upright bipedal postures. Just imagine Euparcaria strutting around on its hind legs. Quite the sight! As the Triassic period drew to a close, the first archosaurs ventured down a path that would lead to the emergence of primitive dinosaurs. We're talking about small, agile, bipedal carnivores like Eoraptor, Herrerasaurus, and Staricosaurus. The exact ancestor of dinosaurs is still a topic of debate. One potential candidate is Lagosuchus, also known as Marasuchus. This tiny bipedal archosaur exhibited several dinosaur-like characteristics, and get this, Paleontologists recently discovered what could be the earliest known dinosaur descended from archosaurs, a 243-million-year-old critter called Nyasasaurus. But archosaurs didn't stop at dinosaurs. Archosaurs went on to give rise to two other formidable groups, the mighty crocodiles and the flying reptiles known as pterosaurs. And if we're being fair, crocodiles should actually get more credit than dinosaurs, because they're still around today doing their crocodile thing. Meanwhile, Tyrannosaurus rex and Brachiosaurus are mere stars of the past. So while dinosaurs often steal the spotlight, it's important to acknowledge the significant contributions of archosaurs. Who would have thought that a tiny rabbit crocodile could be connected to the mighty dinosaurs? But the fascinating evolution of archosaurs was the tipping point for the emergence of dinosaurs. So if it wasn't for these reptiles, we wouldn't have found a cool historical epoch in dinosaurs.